<laughs> okay, call to order the Thursday, January 20th, Ames Parks and Recreation board meeting. Um, I want to just reiterate to anybody that's out in the audience, it is a mask mandate uh, that we ask that you please wear a mask. <coughs> so thank you, everyone, for doing so. Okay, so first up is the approval of minutes from December 16th, 2021. Move to approve. I will second. Any discussion? Okay, so we have a motion on the table to approve the minutes from December 16th. If everyone approves, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Next up is the public forum. This is gives anybody in the audience an opportunity to come and speak with any items that are not on the agenda. Okay, seeing none, public forum is closed. Uh, agenda item number four is the Ada Hayden Heritage Park Ames Triathlon. Yep. So with this one, we're gonna have Joshua um, go through this. All right. Good afternoon. Um, <coughs> in the council, in the commission action form, Iowa Multisport is requesting uh, a waiver to, of the enforcement of the no swimming rule at Ada Hayden Heritage Park, as long as as well as the enforcement of the use of motorized vehicles on the pass at Ada Hayden. Um, as you're well aware, uh, Iowa Multisport has hosted two Ames triathlons at Ada Hayden Heritage Park, using the lake for a swim. Uh, a, a run around the bike pass, and then they use the uh, part of the, the roads, the city city and the county roads, <coughs> 12 mile bike ride. They're re requesting again to use the park on June 26th of, of this year uh, for their third triathlon. As you're aware, the swing rule has been imposed or has been enforced at the park since the park opened in 2004. In 2019, for the initial uh, for the first triathlon staff was out there oh observed the whole um from start from setup to finish and it was very well run it was observed as well in, in 2021 the event it was done really really well the safety plans were executed so <coughs> as part of that um also Last year was the first day, first year they were able to use uh, golf carts for motor for uh, you know uh, transporting individuals around the lake to transport water, you know, and also it was it was an opportunity for if individuals during the race got injured or if they needed to move uh, other individuals around, it was it, it was it was better than having them walk all the way around uh, walk around the, the pass. So um, that was approved last year. And just a couple other things that. Uh, I am is requesting or is wanting to do this year is they would like to do setup uh, a day prior. Initially, uh, they were looking to do it in the morning. Um, since the park is so busy, it's a summer, uh, it's a su Saturday in the, in the middle of summer. It's difficult to allow them to do that. So we, we allowed them to, we we're going to allow them to do set up at 7 PM that night or that evening. And then they still need to get into the facility or into the park at 5 AM prior to park hours, which is, which is uh, our typical park hours are, are 6 to 10.30. And then also, lastly, I am is looking at potentially ho having food trucks come in um, for the event. This, this is, that's, that would be a new thing that they, haven't, that would, they would like to try. They haven't done that yet. So um, 
but we're going to be working with them on these these two other items in regards to the food trucks and then also uh, as far as setup getting more fine details and and how they're going to be doing that but um, staff is recommending uh, alternative one which is to waive enforcement um, of this of this no swimming rule and also approve of allow them to enter uh, and set up Ada Hayden at 5 a.m. on that Sunday and then also recommend city council waive enforcement of the uh, ordinance 19.9 um, for the use of two motorized golf carts at the park. Any questions? Nope. Anybody wants to speak? Okay. If anybody out in the audience wants to come up to speak. Okay. It's like, <laughs> okay. Uh, motion. Okay. Um, so we're looking for a motion. I'll move to approve alternative one. Okay. I'll second. Okay. okay. Any discussion? Okay. So we have a motion on the, the table to approve alternative number one. Can all those in favor? Say all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion passes for alternative number one. Okay. The next up is staff report on the 2021 Homewood Golf Course. Yeah, so, so as you know, the Homewood Golf Course is one of our enterprise funds that along with the uh, um, ISU, uh, Ames ISU Ice Arena. So, so what we try to do is uh, bring you a report. Uh, we do it with the Furman Aquatic Center. We did that in December, and, and now we want to do that with, uh, with Homewood. Um, we have Nate Peets, who's a recreation manager. He oversees the, the clubhouse, um, golf lessons, golf leagues, and, and so on. And then we have Pat Wienia, who's our turf maintenance supervisor, who really oversees the grounds uh, at the, the golf course. So we'll turn it over to, to Nate and Pat, and they'll walk you through uh, the report. We'll have a PowerPoint coming up here on the screen. I'll kind of just hit um, while it's loading the season overview of the 2021 uh, golf season. Uh, Homewood opened on April 1st, uh, and then it did go till October 31st. Those are typical um, days there. There is the option if it is nice at the end of November to extend it, but the weather wasn't the greatest, so we were closed on the 31st there of October. Um, so we were open a total of 214 days. Um, as far as the playing conditions all year is really dry and hot out. So we were really only affected by weather four days um, throughout the whole season. Two of those days we were closed uh, for the whole day just with, with the amount of rain. Um, another two we were just having, having golf carts on like uh, path only or not allowing them at all. So overall it was a, a very, it was a good season. It was very dry, but uh, the course was in great condition all year. So. Um, as far as the, the rounds played at Homewood this year, uh, record in the five years is just 18,000, just over 300 rounds there. So um, definitely had a lot of play this year, as you can tell, uh, the highest in the five-year average there. So uh, I would be projecting probably another good season with 2022 coming. Uh, you know, COVID probably helped us a little bit with getting outdoors and being able to space um, away from people. So Hopefully have another good season coming up here. Um, as far as the season passes, also um, higher than average. So uh, we did sell 180 season passes. Uh, when we talk about season passes too, we offer a family pass. Um, so when we sell a family pass, that is only counted as one in this. So if you had three other family members, that is not counted in that number there. So um, as far as staffing at the clubhouse, there's a picture of the, the new clubhouse for you there. Um, total of 15 staff members throughout the whole golf season. Some of those staff members, uh, you know, would only be around for the 
for the spring when the golf course opened and maybe went back home for the summer with college students or vice versa, came back in the August time period. Uh, but 15 staff members throughout the whole season and two of them, we only had to hire two new staff members. So we had a good retention rate from the year prior, which is great. So hopefully be able to carry that into the 2022 season also. At Homewood, we do off, off, offer a couple of golf specials. Um, with that, we have parent and grandparent specials with uh, children. And then those are typically offered on uh, Tuesdays and Sundays. So uh, with the special, uh, they do get a discounted rate of $10 per person there. And there was a total of 108 discounts given throughout the whole season. Majority of those, or majority came in August with a total of 25 with it being kind of that nice weather and things kind of wrapping up for, for summer and school starting to start there. So overall, we've had a great impact with the, with the uh, specials we run and people really enjoyed that. It's just a good way uh, to get a discount and come out with um, family to enjoy a little parent um, kid interaction interactions there. Golf leagues at Homewood, there are a variety of them. Uh, staff runs, they we run the couples league and the youth league and we will be adding the men's league so what we'll do is set up schedules and matches for that um, we'll run those internally as far as like city league and the homewood ladies league they kind of run their own leagues as far as their matchups and stuff um, but staff is there to help out with checking in golfers or assisting with any issues that that might occur um, throughout the season so a variety of different days and lengths of, of leagues there um, but always looking to add more to get more participants out at the golf course there. Uh, clubhouse rentals. So those are that's a picture, a couple pictures from a holiday party that we had uh, this this winter. Uh, so since the clubhouse opened at the beginning of May, we've had 69 hours of um, clubhouse re rentals there. Um, we do have a lot more scheduled coming up here in the spring. Uh, graduations is going to be popular, whether it's high school or uh, college coming up. Um, even class reunions for Ames High has been very popular, too. So um, still promoting the clubhouse, getting more people in there. Everyone has really enjoyed the facility so far. So hopefully get to utilize it a lot more this, this summer. And as far as winter programming goes, uh, staff has started a couple different card programs, Euchre and Cribbage. So there's uh, three different leagues, and those are kind of wrapping up here. And there's going to be another three sessions starting up in February that will go basically to the start of the golf season in March. So it's been another great way to, to get people out in the winter months, um, socialize, meet new people, and just kind of improve their card game. Um, play too. So participants have really enjoyed it and they hope to just see an increase of, um, of numbers essentially so they can play a lot more different people throughout um, this, the sessions. So let that go. All right. Um, so last winter, Public Works uh, started their project with re-stabilizing uh, the slope on number four, which is right by the river. Uh, work was supposed to be done before the golf season, but that didn't work out. Um, so we had a few issues there where we had to kind of reroute uh, golfers for, I don't know, a good month probably. Um, so, I mean, that, that could have affected a little bit of slow play earlier in the year. But uh, I think the final, pro the final uh, Joshua, you want to go to the next one? The final product ended up, uh, working out pretty good. Um, there's a fence along the whole slope now. The view from the golf course is really good. Um, a lot of people have enjoyed that. Um, the grass came in pretty good. Everything looks like it's in good shape now. So we made it through pretty good. Had a few irrigation issues in that area from construction. But other than that, um, worked out pretty well. Yeah, just the view alone, I think, <laughs> made me happy they did it. So I could deal with the the delay. <laughs> so um, during the summer, um, this is probably something we're going to really have to look into in the future is redoing the irrigation system. Uh, I think we just passed year 20 of the system. And this is what I do all summer. 
it felt like. So I've, <laughs> I've had to spend a little bit more money the last two years, especially to replacing. And uh, it's not a lot of fun. Joshua, you can second that one. Yes. So, but uh, that'll be something we need to talk about with budgeting in the future too. Uh, late this fall with the weather being dry, I was able to get a few other projects done out there. Um, some tiling uh, on the left there. It's always been a constant wet area from all the water from the irrigation settling into the low spot. So we got that taken care of and uh, currently decided to redo some of the bunkers. Um, they've just become old and outdated. The, the drainage isn't good. Um, collecting a lot of acorns from trees. So made a couple of them a little bit smaller and filled in one. So um, finish that up in the spring, but I think the golfers will enjoy that. Uh, this was something new this year that doesn't happen up here very often. We actually had uh, one of the hurricanes down south ended up, um, the winds were just right at blue it blew up millions and millions of moths that turned into cutworm. And usually this is something they deal with in the South a lot. Cutworm feed on turf grass and they can wipe out an area in a couple days. Um, the bottom left, you can kind of see that's how small they start off. Um, they, the moths lay thousands of eggs and then they start to hatch and they'll fall to the ground and start feeding. And in about four or five days, they will be a couple inches long and, you'll have some areas wiped out. We, uh, we were pretty lucky. I didn't notice any damage on the golf course or in the parks. Um, the only damage I really saw in town was at cold water in some of their natives. So luckily the temperatures got cold enough to uh, take out a lot of those worms, but that's something then that was definitely new to me. So it was interesting. I learned a lot. <laughs> um, and just winding up, I think, the new clubhouse this year was kind of that final piece to the puzzle out there. Um, I think it all played into having a really good year. There's been a lot of play out there. Um, I think the customers in Ames are happy with the product and um, it serves a good purpose. So um, yeah, it was a great year. Mm -hmm. Any questions or anything? Is this the first year that we've done like euchre and cribbage then? Yep. Okay. Is it something you think will continue to grow? That's the goal. Yeah, yeah. that's the plan. Getting more winter programs to utilize the facility. Um, so yeah, we have another one starting up next week. So hopefully a okay. final push of uh, people registering this weekend and uh, we'll get that started up and hopefully keep growing that as, as it goes on. Okay. Registration so, so all is of, open. All of, yep. It's open. Yeah, we are. I was going to say, so Monday, Monday night's Monday night. <laughs> Go and get signed up. Yep. You, you have an opportunity to play me. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Do you see a, um, a maximum saturation point of, of holes played? And I mean, are we there? Do um, you anticipate even ever going above what we did this year? I, th I think it can go above. There, there's still those. Um, slower times of the day oh. and, and the week, but man, the majority of the time it's, it's pretty busy out there. Um, so at some point it's gonna, that's where you kind of got to look into that pricing to get that, the demand and supply right where it needs to be, where you, you're not overdoing the course. Mm -hmm. and so it's something to look into, but I think there's still some room to yeah, go. Wait, well, there's definitely some room, but yeah, we were, it was busy non-stop and certainly those days where it's beautiful 75 and it's mm -hmm. packed from 7 a.m to 7 p.m so i mean this was the first i had a retired gentleman working for me and he would come in at 4 30 in the morning to start mowing so he wouldn't have to deal <laughs> deal with golfers as much so <laughs> wow and when does the spring season start then when does the golf course open april 1st okay. weather permitting there but Hopefully it's sunny in like 70. Yeah, yeah fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> well, we kind of, I kind of feel bad a little bit. The weather looked really bad when we closed. Yeah. And then about a week later, it got great, yeah. <laughs> great again. And people were wanting us open. But kind of once we shut down, it's it's hard to open back up. So, mm -hmm. 
if you remember last year in uh, in 2020 we stayed open for another seven or eight days yeah. in in november because it was nice mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. yeah is uh october 31st the typical closing day yep If, if, if there's no other questions, I would just say, you know, thanks to, to, to Nate, you know, it's a little bit uh, new for him with the, the clubhouse and doing the rentals and, and so on. He also um, oversees our admission concessions at uh, Furman Aquatic yeah. Center as well. Um, but uh, he's doing a, a great job. And also Pat um, with, uh, with the golf course, uh, you know, I just uh, was meeting with some people last week and, and they, they actually specifically said, tell Pat, you know, he's doing a, a great job. So um, I figured I'd just do that tonight. Um, but, <laughs> but it doesn't go, you know, with, uh, with a lot of our staff. We, we get comments and, um, and, uh, and really positive. So, uh, and one person even said, you know, it's just fun. I don't golf, but just going by on uh, Duff Avenue, going by the course, seeing the stripes, see how, the, mm -hmm. how, how good the fairways look. Um, and everything so so thanks to pat and and to nate for everything that they do um and provide a positive experience for our our residents and our golfers so thank you mm -hmm. thank, awesome. you. thank you thanks guys okay item number six staff report on aquatic programming yeah so we're gonna have Courtney is going to go through this, but uh, before she starts, um, I know you just saw Jill in December. So Jill Burt is our aquatics manager. Um, and then next to her, uh, to her right is our left is Jan Britson, who is our swim lesson coordinator. And, and, and I'll just have to say, you know, with, uh, with Jan, we had uh, an opening. What was, what was that Jan nine years ago? Um, 10, 10 years ago. And I asked her if she would uh, help us out for a couple of years <laughs> and, uh, with swim lessons. And, and here she is, uh, you know, 10 years, 10 years later. So, um, so, and, and just like I said, with Nate and, and Pat, I'll do this on the front end, you know, Jill and, and Jan do a, an awesome job, uh, very customer driven. And, and uh, what you'll hear um, with Courtney going through is what are we going to do once the uh, uh, municipal pool closes so courtney all right thank you um so as as you all know uh the city of ames and ames community school district have had a 50 plus year partnership in the operation of, of municipal pool and with the construction of the new high school and pool um it's needed for the school district to progress in, in their construction process to um, demo uh, municipal pool and with that, um, the last day of operations will be February 28th. So with that date soon approaching, staff is exploring, as Keith mentioned, um, options to continue year-round aquatic programming uh, for the interim period between February 28th and um, the opening of a new city indoor aquatic facility in 2024. The goal within this time frame is really to um, provide the most feasible level of aquatic services with the available facilities, schedules, and staff uh, by working with community aquatic facilities and programming additional programs within the existing firm aquatic center schedule. Um, so here on the slide is a quick look at the current aquatic programs that are offered. And um, I would know, obviously, these programs are, are kind of a generic <laughs> umbrella where um, the programs listed have a variety of classes and levels offered um, within them. And to achieve the overall goal of continuing as many of these programs as possible, the traditional scheduling of these classes may have to change, um, resulting in either new days and times that they're offered at, maybe offered at different facilities, and um, maybe offered in different seasons. Parks and Recreation does currently have um, agreements with other community aquatic facilities in ISU Forker and Green Hills community to offer programs. And in staff's exploration of community aquatic facilities, uh, factors and amenities will determine um, the viability of use 
and what types of programming would best be suited at, at those facilities. And, and um, some of those factors listed there, water depth, temperature, capacity, and really available time slots um, to us for, for programming. Some advantages of having other facilities um, for use are listed as well. Um, obviously the one just to offer indoor programming and have year round options uh, for our customers. Um, and some of our customers have a preference for an indoor facility um, due to just the more controlled environment um, and it eliminates the concern to sun exposure and it limits inclement weather cancellations. Um, some disadvantages um, to community aquatic facility use um, is in staffing. Um, staffing would be more widespread across various locations and may increase the need uh, for additional staff to cover all those different locations. Um, and as mentioned in, in some previous and in Jill's um, last, last commission report is it's very limited right now as it is. And supervision would need to be um, correlating a correlating increase with increased staffing as well. Um, additional expenses and in increased staff needs um, and from rental fees um, to use the community facilities um, may result in higher registration fees for those programs as well, um, which may also ca cause program rates to differ um, based on the facility used and rental fees. Uh, to be able to offer swim lessons um, at Furman due to the closure of Community School, um, staff is recommending reducing open swim hours on Monday and Wednesday evenings to offer swim lessons. Um, with the 50 meter and the splash pool basins being used for lessons, um, staff also recommends um, adding, adding water walking with the availability of the Lazy River um, during those times as well. Staff has explored two options as you see outlined on the slide. Uh, option one has open swim from 1 to 6 p.m. versus the typical 1 to 8 p.m. time. Um, water walking would begin at 6 and run till 8 p.m. and swim lessons would begin at 6.15. And the, the reasoning swim lessons would start slightly after the water walking and the closure of open swim is really just to provide time for the transition of patrons and allow staff to get set up for those, those lessons. Option two follows the same program layout, um, only with open swim going slightly longer until 6.30, um, resulting in a later um, start of the water walking and swim lessons by either a half hour or 45 minutes. And staff is favorable to option one, and we'll show some more data points um, to that reasoning as we go through some of the next slides here. Here is, um, I think we went. It's group. I have some slides not showing up here, but um, you want to exit out of it? This is that one right there. This right here? Yep. Yeah. There we go. So this is a side-by-side -side comparison of a um, Furman program hours per week and uh, for the current schedule and the two proposed options. And the main decrease um, in hours is obviously within the open swim. And so to accommodate a portion of these decreased hours, staff is proposing um, adding twilight open swims um, to the schedule. And the next slide, let's see if that, yep, there we go. Um, uh, twilight swim, this would be a, a fun open swim activity that would be offered on the second and fourth Monday of um, June and July from 8 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. Uh, for a total of six hours to replace a portion of those lost open swim times. And this would be offered as an open swim, meaning a mission would be included in the Furman season pass. So as you can see, Monday and Wednesdays were um, selected um, as the days of the week for the proposed changes based on some analysis of the average admission, admission swipes at Furman on a weekly basis. So as you can see on the table, fewer admissions were gathered on these two nights, which aligned with our goal to implement changes with the least and minimal impacts. I just mentioned one thing here, Courtney, if you go back to that, that slide, Joshua. So, so you might wonder why if, uh, if we're proposing that, uh, you know, open swim goes until 6 or 6.30, um, why are we showing 5.30 to, to 6? So, again, you know, a lot of times, you know, we don't make a count of how many people are in the facility at, uh, um, at a specific hour. 
Um, so the best thing that we could do is if between 5.30 and 6, if you just look at Monday, you know, 50 people are coming in on average during that time frame. And generally, you know, most people stick around for roughly an hour and a half, two hours, two and a half hours um, to, to swim. So, um, so even though they're coming before when we're saying we're going to do swim lessons, um, they would still be around. So that's why we, we added that extra half hour on the front end. This slide provides some advantages and disadvantages to the proposed change in and changes of first we'll start with um, just option one. So um, with swim lessons, um, so open swim would be uh, 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. with swim lessons starting at 6.15, water walking at 6. And um, some of the advantages, 48 additional swim lesson, lesson classes would able to be offered. And with that, the ability to serve up to 240 participants which is an increase to the of about 80, 80 more participants than what option two would be able to provide. Um, it would allow us to continue offering evening swim lessons. Um, the earlier start time um, is ideal for more of the age demographics that the lessons serve. Um, and there would be an additional of the addition of the four hours of the water walking per week. And obviously one of the cons is that it would decrease open swim for those same amount of four hours per week. Uh, option two, uh, with the later swim lesson start time at 6.45, water walking at 6.30. Um, pros, again, more, more swim lesson classes offered. Um, with this option, it would be 32 versus the 48 of option one. And so with that, there would be 160 additional participants that would be able to be served through those classes. And that was the 80, 80 difference from the 240 of option one. Um, obviously, some of the same ability to offer, offer evening swim lessons, three hours of additional water walking per week um, with this option. And um, some of the cons um, still decrease in open swim hours by three weeks or three hours per week. And the later start time may limit some age group participants, obviously with that, that 30 minute difference and a decrease uh, in the class offerings um, by 16 versus option one. And finally, twilight swim, um, as, as mentioned before, some of the pros offsets a portion of the decreased open swim hours, fun special event, kind of diversify the, the schedule a little bit, and admissions would be included in a season pass. Um, one of the cons is that it would eliminate one evening of rental time slots, but again, some of that same comparison of why Monday and Wednesdays were, were looked at is kind of, kind of in the same sense for those, those rentals and that popularity on that night as well. Again, jeez. I just want to keep it interesting. Skip around a little bit. Um, that's not it. The one right before. This one? Yep, that's it. Okay. So real quick, little teaser on the last slide, but before we get to that, um, with the charges proposed and staff's consideration within the, the options, um, obviously, with what we've gone through, staff um, is, is favorable to option one and the Twilight Swim offerings. Um, but the, the Furman season pass rate would remain the same as the changes to the, the summer schedule are not too significant. Um, and the Furman season pass rates are, are displayed there on the slide. And since our program fees are developed to cover direct expenses, um, some of those things, lifeguards, instructors, program supplies, et cetera. Um, programs offered at the um, community facilities may be charged at a higher rate, like mentioned before, um, to cover those additional inspect expenses incurred from facility fees. Hmm. So with this information, uh, we'd be interested to hear commission's feedback um, on staff's proposal of options. Um, First, first question, does commission favor reducing open swim on Monday and Wednesday evenings um, to accommodate evening swim lessons and water walking? And if so, um, is there a preference on which, which option? Um, and also question two, does commission support offering twilight swim um, on the second and fourth Mondays in June and July at Furman? So um, we'd be interested to get your your guys' take on that. And then, like Keith mentioned, um, if there's any questions, be happy to answer those. And, and Jen and Jill are here for questions as well. So just want to, so are we eliminating, like, the adult um, 
swim activities than in the evening. Like there used to be like adult aer- swim aerobics and that stuff. And that's kind of just being replaced with the water walking then or. No, uh, it's a great question. So those typical times that would be replacing would be open swim. So typically the open swim would run from 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. Right. And so those time chunks that um, the swim lessons and the water walking would be within the, the previous open swim schedule. Um, so there wouldn't be uh, an, any elimination of, of water aerobic classes oh. or aqua classes that were previously oh. offered. Okay. If I can jump in on that too. Um, we hey, do Jill. offer... Hey, Jill. Um, we do typically offer some evening water aerobics classes during open swim times. Um, they're not always the most popular, so sometimes yeah. they run, and unfortunately, sometimes they don't. But in discussion with Jan, we do feel there would be some room in the 50 meter um, where, if we felt that we could run water aerobics classes at that same time, there would be some space we can carve out in the 50 meter to have adult aqua aerobic classes in that same time frame as well. Okay. Okay. I love the twilight open swim mm-hmm. option. I think that is a huge idea. Like I I love that. Um I'm a huge proponent for for doing that. So I think it would be fun and maybe it would be something yeah. to continue on in the future, <laughs> but it would be a good test kind of year to test it out and see what the feedback is and see how many people you get. I love that. I personally think uh, reducing the open swim time as a compromise mm-hmm. to accommodate the swim lessons is a really good idea. And I, I don't think anyone's going to balk against that because, you know, offering these swim lessons is really vital to our philosophy of lifetime fitness. So I don't see that, you know, reducing it and, and using option one. I think it's a good idea. Mm-hmm. I like it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, we have to compromise. So, mm-hmm. well. is there enough time if there's um, cancellations due to weather to get enough curriculum in for the uh, swim lessons? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, our typical policy has been that we don't cancel, we actually don't cancel swim lessons. Staff will show up. Um, you know, we can do our safety topics that are also important, but we'll, instead of doing a little bit of a safety topic each day, we'll do them kind of in bulk. Um, we have some different fun story time books and things that help with the safety, water safety messages. Um, so that is traditionally what we have done. Um, but it's also typically just been, July morning swim lessons that we do outdoors and the rest of our swim lessons have been indoors where we have that controlled climate. Um, so it would, you know, would cut down on time. I think if it's one lesson, we would probably stay with our current policy, but if it was, you know, a group is missing three, four lessons, we would for sure want to make efforts to continue that. So some, some communities do like Friday would be a makeup day, um, we do have different programming built in on Fridays, so we can look at different options. Um, but it, that will be a change for sure from what our, our typical, um, issues are. Thanks. Does that answer your question? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anything you want to add about that? <laughs> I think Jan's here for moral support. <laughs> <laughs> what have y'all heard since ACAC is going to have a big chunk of time and there has been some discussion about them providing swim lessons and some America kind of in limbo, uh, are they going to up theirs knowing that, you know, this pool is going to be unavailable to you all? Have they, do you know if they're going to be upping their offerings? And um, how will that affect us? Yeah, I think there's still a lot in a lot of puzzle pieces coming together yet. So I don't know that I have the answer for that. I don't know. And Courtney and I met with uh, with Jerry Peters from the school district uh, and just to ask about the, the new high school pool and availability and so on. And there is information, you know, in the uh, report, you know, regarding uh, the, the comments. 
Uh, right now, it's really not looking to to open it to the public um, with it. So so and the water temperature they're talking. He told us maybe 78 degrees um, for the water temperature. So so a lot of things were not conducive for us to to do any type of programming. We did specifically ask about ACAC and would they be doing programs? Would they do doing swim lessons? And and basically what we heard right now, or when we met, uh, this is a while ago uh, in December, um, he basically said, we don't know. So it kind of echoes, you know, what Jill said is there's a lot of things that, that they don't have worked out or if they do, they haven't communicated that with us. When does this need to be put in place? <coughs> As far as the the schedule, or I guess all together. Yeah. So for Furman, um, you know, we want to have the information out before we start selling season season passes, so that people know what they're purchasing. Um, so the goal is to get that wrapped up um, pretty quickly, so that as far as summer, we have that in line. Um, then I think. So there's kind of three time frames on, you know, we have a gap between March 1st and Furman opening where programming is, um, you know, right now we don't have any programming. Then when we have Furman open, programming will look another way. And then after Labor Day, um, so there's kind of three chunks of time of different programs that we're looking at and they each, you know, as soon as possible for all of them, but summer we would like to get that wrapped up pretty quick so we can sell season passes with with the schedule published and in and in the report you know there was uh you know information you know about some of the the hotels you know they already do offer some some uh, public access uh we know there are some of our lap swimmers that will go there um, some will look for, for other things. Um, ISU, a lot of conversation about that, but staff is having conversation with Iowa State you know, regarding Forker Pool um, and you know, the Swim America that is coming into to that conversation. Uh, Courtney and I had a meeting. It was about a different topic, uh, but, uh, but we had one of uh, um, the ISU Rec Services uh, management in that meeting and and he said yeah we let's uh let's keep talking and see what we can do to to help you guys out so so there's a few things unfortunately we don't have anything in place um as of right now you know to to accommodate the lap swimmers as of march 1st um you know swim lessons you know we um, have had some, some private lessons, things of that sort, kind of that that March and April and May. Um, but, um, you know, we just, uh, there's not a lot out there. And a lot of people that do have pools are doing their own thing as well. So mm -hmm. so it's really, is the, the pool available? Is it uh, sized so we can use it? And and uh, so we, we'll just keep working as best we can to, to see what we can get lined up. Uh, with the uh, Iowa State Rec Services, would we be looking to, I guess, host our uh, our own lessons in their facilities? Yeah, that's what we would. That's what we would do. Okay. You know, just like right now with with uh, um, our aqua classes, we do our own aqua classes. We just mm -hmm. use their their facility. Mm -hmm. um, we do some parent child swim classes out at uh, Green Hills. You know, unfortunately, with COVID right now, we're still kind of we're not able to get in. I believe, you know, maybe for another week or so, and, and that may change or be extended as well. Yeah. Uh, and again, with any of this, we want to make sure that if we're going into another facility, um, such as Green Hills, you know, first and foremost, those residents need to be kept safe. Mm -hmm. And and if uh, um, the, they tell us that, hey, we, we're not going to have you come in for, uh, for a few weeks, you know, mm -hmm. we're going to honor that because we don't want to be the ones that are bringing something in and, yeah. and people are getting sick. So mm -hmm. conversations beginning immediately with our current, you know, current facilities that we have agreements with to see what flexibility we have with our, you know, existing schedules where, or additions to, and then like you said, with other, with other community you know, 
aquatic facilities, hotels, motels, just to, to gauge the needle. And if they already have existing offerings, if, if there's any ways that we can work together just to share that information with the public. So if, even if it's not one of our programs, the public at least knows where, where that is accessible for yep. the next year or so. I mean, I, I assume it is possible, but if we did end up maybe getting closer to the season, ended up working something out with Iowa State or one of the other facilities, would we be able to move, I guess, some of this from Furman to there and change the schedule, I guess? Um, I think as far as logistics and, and staffing, mm -hmm. it would we would want to keep the proposed schedule change for Furman so that we can utilize the same staff. Otherwise we're watering out. Um, I need to, so we need to have lifeguards to keep Furman open and we're at maximum staffing that we need at Furman, but then we also need swim lesson instructors and lifeguards for the swim lessons at the same time at another facility. Okay. So yeah. summer, I think it would be keeping what we're proposing at Furman, even if we were able to get into another community space yeah. um, for those reasons. But there but there may be some other programming. Um. And I think one of the other things with that too, Jacob, is is that once we advertise and and we start taking registrations, yeah. you know, sometimes if we go to other facilities, it doesn't always match up. So maybe we're starting a lesson at Furman at 630. Yeah. Um, but now if we go there, we have to start at seven yep. uh, and so on. So, so we try to minimize confusion, mm -hmm. you know, with, uh, with our participants. So that would be another factor that we would look at as well. Yeah, that's fair. Are we looking for a motion or just input on this? Um, yeah, you, if you wanted to make a, a motion, you can. Um, I think what I'm hearing is that everybody likes the Twilight Swims, mm -hmm. um, likes uh, the um, option one mm -hmm. with uh, only open swim until six o'clock. So if you want to make a motion, you can. Yeah, I would move that we go with option one and to keep the Twilight Swim or add the Twilight Swim. I'll second that. Okay, any discussion? I guess we have a motion on the table. Any discussion? Have, have you all talked to your current pass holders to ask them about cutting swimming off at 6.30 or 6? Um, we have not put that question out directly. Because it's pretty busy there when I'm leaving work around mm -hmm. 6. And I didn't know what kind of a... I, you know, hopefully it's going to be just a couple yeah. of years. Yeah. And so just, um, I guess, to point a little perspective, you know, we're talking Monday and Wednesday night. So we, we do want to be respectful of working families or just, you know, anybody who that time frame works for. Um, so it would be two four-week sessions. So we're really talking about 16 days. Is that math right, Keith? <laughs> 16 yep. days in the season. Um, so we don't, at Municipal Pool, we ran swim evening lessons Monday through Thursday. But, you know, we started talking about that and then went, that's really a big, a bigger change that's going to affect more people. Um, so we definitely do want to be respectful of our patrons, but, uh, you know, try to find a compromise where we can, can do both. And, and I think, uh, you know, with that, Dwayne, <coughs> and I think you kind of touched on it, um, Sarah, is is nothing is going to be ideal, um, you know, with uh, these next two years. Obviously, the ideal situation would have been if the Healthy Life Center would have uh, passed. It'd be open right now, and, and this would all be a, a moot point. Right. Uh, we wouldn't have to do that. But uh, um, but it's one of those that we're not in that situation, so we need to, to make the, the best of it. And, and and like Jill just said, you know, we're, we're not offering swim lessons Monday through Thursday like we have in the past. Um, but we do need to to add, uh, you know, some additional evening swim lessons just for the reasons that you said, Nathan. Um, you know, we want people to be comfortable. We want them to, to be able to learn how to swim. It's a lifelong um, sport activity that they can do. And 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 uh, taking all that into account, you know, that's there are going to be some concessions, you know, from 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 a lot of different people. And um, we may hear it. We may not hear it. And, and usually what happens is once we explain why, you know, we're doing things and we'll do that um, when we get the information out. 
most people are pretty reasonable and they and they understand. So. Mm -hmm. I think in the um, annual survey that we do, two common things that we do see are more water walking and um, more evening swim times. So again, we felt good about these are additional things that we can add. It's not only swim lessons, but here's some other things that we can add that have been requested that now we feel is a time that we can can do that and that hopefully um you know that does make up for for some of the time that's not available as open swim anymore i mean i think you guys have done a great job with kind of analyzing the data with what you had and proposing an option and it's all about a compromise so thank you okay so we have a motion on the table to reduce the open swim on Mondays and Wednesday evenings to accommodate the evening swim lessons, and then to offer the twilight open swim on the second and fourth Mondays in June and July. So option one. So option one. <laughs> Can anybody, or, all in favor say aye. Aye. Um, aye. Anyone opposed, same sign. Motion passes for option one. Okay, next up is motion regarding the fiscal year 2022. Yeah. So thank you, Jill. Thank you, Jan, <laughs> you know, for everything that you do. Thank you, Courtney, for, for that report. So so the next uh you know item is just with uh with the operational budget. And Josh was pulling up a, a PowerPoint. You know, we'll go through a, a few things just to give you an idea. So so there are still, or there may still be some changes to, to what we're showing you um, today. Um, if they do, there'll be, uh, you know, minor uh, changes. And we will be taking this to city council, um, going through the full budget um, in early February, that first week of February, that um, I think it's the second, mm -hmm. yep, yep, Wednesday, February 2nd. So we'll present our budget at, at that time. And then there's op, uh, opportunities for the public, you know, to uh, to provide comments um, and uh, make requests and, and so on. And uh, and then usually the first uh, meeting in March, they adopt uh, you know the the budget. So so that's kind of what we're we're doing. So what we're showing you tonight, again, it may change a little bit, but not uh, not very much. So uh, with our the our operational budget, again, this is different than the CIP. So with this. Um, we have the general fund, which is most of our department activities, and, and you'll see a little bit. Um, the difference, or the, the only two that aren't, are the enterprise fund, which is Ames ISUI Serena and Homewood Golf Course. The enterprise funds, you know, they do uh, revenue, needs to, to cover expenses, you know, and you'll see we do have a, an operational fund balance, you know, for both of those uh, programs. So if uh, expenses exceed revenues, you know, we have something that we can, can draw from. Um, with that, it's a little bit of a hybrid with our enterprise funds, um, but uh, but as far as operations, there are no property tax dollars that go to, to subsidize um, either of those two facilities. Uh, the one thing that uh, does get infused is from the capital side, um, but that's with local option sales tax. Um, it's no no property tax dollars for, for that uh, either. So the general fund basically is um, property tax and fees and charges, donations and so on is is how those are funded. So if you get a, um, with this, um, we've got a couple slides with some numbers just so you have a, a general idea. Um, so just on the, on the recreation side, parks and recreation, general fund, you can see just under $4 million budget and expenses and you can see how that's broken out, you know, between recreation and parks. You can see from a revenue side, you know, obviously the, the recreation side brings in a lot more revenue um, through, uh, again, through fees and charges, daily admissions, whether it's the community center, um, firm and aquatic center, ice, uh, not the ice arena, but, um, but any of those activities. And uh, in parks, you know, just doesn't have a, a lot of revenue um, uh, activities. We have our shelter reservations, any, uh, um, Sports, bat ball fields, those rentals, uh, and then there are some uh, donations that uh, that are into that as well. But you can see just from the recreation side, you know, 41% subsidy, 
uh, parks is about 94% subsidy, but then um, as a whole, parks and recreation is about 63% subsidized um, for activities. If you go to, to Homewood uh, with this, uh, again, enterprise fund, you can see the expenses and the, and the revenue. Uh, the Homewood fund support, the reason it's in parentheses, so we'll actually be putting money into the, uh, the, the, um, the fund balance, the operational fund balance. So revenues are exceeding expenses, uh, what we're predicting for 22-23. And then the unreserved fund balance, you know, right now or at the end of 22-23 uh, will be $195,000. Um, with this, uh, our reserve fund, balance, <coughs> we try to, to keep I think, about 15% of our expenses in for, uh, for a reserve fund balance. And this is on top of that. So one of the things that we're talking about, and you'll see in a little bit, is uh, there are some things that are coming up that we may um, pull from this uh, fund balance to, to uh, cover some of the expenses of, of some special projects that we have going on. As far as the Ames ISU Ice Arena, uh, there too you can see uh, revenue, a little bit over expenses. So just under $3,000 will be going to the, to the fund balance. Um, and again, here, what we do is we try to keep 25% of our expenses as a reserved fund, right? Um, and then this is uh, on top of that. Now you may say, well, 142,000, that's a, that's a good chunk of money. Uh, we're still right now with, uh, um, with Iowa State, you know, this year they, they still did not do ISU or intramural hockey, um, which uh, that uh, reduces our uh, number of uh, ice rentals, you know, some of the revenue that we bring in. You know, there's some other things that we have had conversation with some of the user groups uh, about. So, so we're a little nervous about um, ice rentals in the future, if they're, if they're going to continue at the same level they are or if they'll be coming, um, continue to, to, to not do some of these activities or maybe even reduce. So, so that's why, um, you know, we have that fund balance and we want to make sure that uh, if some of that happens, you know, we can still cover it. Mm -hmm. So as far as the pandemic, you know, the, with it, I know uh, we're all wearing masks and, and uh, doing what we can to, to keep our, ourselves and others, you know, safe. Uh, but we do have, uh, um, it has had an impact and, you know, participation and revenue. Uh, one of the things that uh, uh, with that third bullet there with part-time staff, so those numbers there are the number of W-2s that we give out at the end of the year, all right? So, so in 2019, uh, we, were, we had about 475 different um, people working for us in our temporary positions. 272 in 2020, um, and then last year in 2021, 343. So, so we're back up on the rise in 2021, but we're still not near what we're, we're doing. And some of our activities uh, and programs, some have uh, gotten back up to where they were pre-pandemic and, and exceeded, you know, where we were pre-pandemic. Um, some just aren't quite there yet. So, so it's kind of a, a balance. With fees and charges, which uh, you got this in your in your packet, uh, about 40% of the activities and programs will see some type of an increase. You know, they could be anywhere from uh, from zero to seven percent. Um, so you can see 60% of our programs were not uh, proposing an increase. Um, ice arena rental rates, five percent. Uh, firm and aquatic center right now, we're not uh, proposing any changes. Um, Homewood season passes, there, there's increase, you know, varies with, uh, with those. And then the auditorium, we have a, a 3% increase in, in rental rates uh, as well. As far as some projects, you know, and these are continuations. Um, the downtown <coughs> plaza uh, continues, and I'll give you a little bit more of an update in a little bit. Uh, Daily Park, the splash pad out there. Um, ADA inventory and transition plan. We just uh, pretty much I think just about finalized that uh, that RFP. So that will be going out um, sometime in uh, in February. <coughs> we'll get that in. And that's really looking at all of our parks and facilities and, and seeing where we're compliant. What do we need to do to, to become compliant if we aren't? And then obviously the indoor aquatic center, a lot of things happening uh, there. 
As far as instructional athletic programs, you know, continue with the, the Miracle League spring and fall, and, and we'll be uh, um, having some changes um, with that, really trying to get more uh, individuals registered and playing. Um, we also, from uh, a volunteer standpoint, there's a number of groups that, uh, that are interested in helping either financially or with uh, um, volunteer hours. Small Wonders in Preschool Adventures, we've done uh, the Small Wonders for a, a, a long time. It was in place before I got here, and, and I've been here just short of 30 years. So, so we've been doing it a long time, but uh, we did have a, a retirement in, uh, at the start of this year. Um, one of our staff uh, uh, decided, and we have two staff members, and then uh, our director is uh, going to retire at the end of this year. Um, we also, with not doing it last year, the number of participants we had this year is down a little bit. We used to go five mornings a week. Now we go three. And uh, we just felt that it, now is the time to, to maybe stop that, that program. One of the other things driving that is our multi-purpose room here at the, the community center um, where we have dance and gymnastics right now. Um, with the, the growth of the city and additional staff being added, um, we are running out of space or have run out of space. Um, so, so that, that uh, multi-purpose area will probably be converted to um, cubicles and maybe a conference room. So, so we are going to be doing some, uh, some renovation out at our office to try to get some of those programs from here out there and, uh, and then free up that space. Uh, neighborhood programming. Uh, Courtney is working with uh, Julie Gould from uh, Planning, who is a neighbor, uh, neighborhood liaison. And uh, what they're looking at is doing some programming where, you know, families, parents, kids can come together and do different activities. And it may even wind up uh, having some fun competition from one neighborhood to the, to the next. Um, so that's something that we're going to be doing uh, this, uh, this coming year. And then the other thing is we are discontinuing uh, concessions at North River Valley for adult softball. Uh, it just uh, has not, there's some nights where we may be taking $10, $15. We don't even pay for staff and, and, uh, and the product. So uh, what we do do want to do is um, Iowa games, you know, when they have uh, their tournament down there and it's youth, you know, that's a, that's a huge thing. You know, if you got kids down there all day, you know, they're buying, buying, buying. So so we're actually going to be uh, Nate with Homewood. Uh, what he'll do is on the um, on those weekends, he'll just uh, take product out of Homewood and, and use his staff and do concessions on those special events rather than staffing it all the, all the time. So, and it frees up, uh, you know, staff to do other things. As far as aquatics, we've already talked about the closure of uh, municipal pool and interim programming. That was the report that uh, you know Courtney, Jill, and Jan gave. Um, this will be the last season of Brookside Waiting Pool, um, and then we'll be going to um, the Daily Splash Pad, Daily Park Splash Pad. As far as uh, Furman, the Lazy River, that leak, um, uh, that will be taken care of uh, prior to the season starting. We did have one. Uh, one quote on it. We're just waiting for another one just to see if that first one was reasonable um, or, or not, uh, but that will be happening. And then one of the other things that we're doing is uh, variable frequency drives and uh, the payback, if we change the, those drives and does everybody understand what those are? Mm -hmm. uh, Jacob, you don't. Josh, will you want to give a, a quick overview? So <clears throat> the motors at, at uh at the Furman Aquatic Center, once there's water in the pool, they have to be running at uh, 24 hours a day. And those motors right now are running at 100% uh, capacity. Mm -hmm. What we're trying to do is with these VFDs, we can save, uh, we can slow down the motor speed, mm -hmm. but still uh, provide um, the, uh, you know, the, the disinfection, the circulation mm -hmm. that's required as it's specified, yeah. but we can slow down the motors, save electrical costs uh, by doing that. So, um, yeah, thanks, Joshua. And, uh, and we're thinking that the, the payback on these, uh, on these VFDs, um, is somewhere between two and three years. Nice. Um, and then after that, and we'll start seeing, you know, lower electric costs yep. right away, yep. um, which, uh, which will be a good thing. Good. Okay. So with the auditorium, you know, we continue to, to 
um, the, the pandemic got us into some live streaming and we do the, the virtual classes for other programs and so on. So we are still doing some of that. Um, but one of the things that uh, Craig Kaufman, our auditorium, Banshell, and community center manager, what he started was uh, um, uh, virtually anywhere concerts um, last year, and and it went well. There was some revenue sharing. Um, uh, there was some revenue sharing, but uh, so what he's calling it this year is actually virtually anywhere and here. So so there is going to be a live component this year, which uh, which wasn't the case last year. Um, they will be on Thursday evenings in February and March, um, local artists, and then, uh, you know, just some rev revenue sharing um, between us and the, the artists. So uh, look for, for that information coming out, uh, and and then it's really a, a neat thing. So as far as wellness, in-person and virtual class options, uh, we do have some additional equipment that uh, we'll be purchasing, you know, once a cycle and then uh, an elliptical as as well. And again, with uh, with wellness, Nancy Shaw does a, a great job of, of always trying to change up programs, add new offerings, and, and so on. Uh, Homewood Golf Course, you know, really with uh, with that, those first two items, you know, Nate kind of covered. Uh, the one thing is we are uh, doing a, an acoustic study. We actually had a meeting this week with a company called IMAG uh, because one of the things that we have heard is that the sound – um, for meetings and programs, things just isn't as good as it should be. And uh, so they're looking at some some things. And there's really, you know, three components. One is the, the sound system. Where do you have your speakers? Um, are they right speakers for the, um, for the application and so on? Uh, the, the second one um, is the, the mechanical um, side. And then the third one is just the... Uh, just the um, is just the you know the the room itself right. um, and and the materials that are in there. So so really looking one we probably are going to have to do some things with the sound. <coughs> um, we will have to to do some uh, some acoustical panels on the wall um, that will help. And then uh, the last uh, thing uh, we probably have to we may have to do some acoustical panels on the ceiling um, also. Um, but they're they're doing all that work. They'll give us some recommendations. And then long term, you know, there may be some things from a mechanical side that uh, we can change to reduce some of that uh, kind of white noise, you know, that's happening. But but that's one of the things that we're looking at. Uh, as far as the the ice arena, you know, we have the the new ice resurfacer. Uh, we are uh, uh, doing a uh, drive to Zamboni uh, experience. It's a it's a new class. I know Jeremy, you're all fired up for that um, to <laughs> to get signed up. Now we do have an Olympia. Uh, but most people don't know what an Olympia is, but they know what a Zamboni is. So, so we're just kind of uh, <laughs> uh, doing, you know, drive the Zamboni experience. And then with the ice arena coordinator, um, we'll be uh, um, hiring an ice arena coordinator. And uh, we're also, we'll be hiring a, a recreation coordinator as well to, to help with all of our recreation programs. Ice arena coordinator will be out at the, the arena um, roughly from, you know, three to, uh, you know, three to nine, four to 10, something like that. So what we will do is we'll have, uh, you know, full-time staff there, you know, from roughly 8 a.m. until 10 p.m., um, which I think will help from mm -hmm. a, a user perspective and, and communication and, and so on. So, <coughs> so that's something that we'll be doing. From Parkside, you know, we have shared this before, um, trying to, to look at being uh, trim-free, um, in the parks by 2025, uh, and at the end of this next year, we're looking at 18 of our 38 parks would be mostly trim-free. And and again, when we started this project, you know what, seven years ago, uh, yeah. roughly, uh, we had to to trim in every one of our parks, and 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 it was uh, we were dedicating probably about 120 person hours <coughs> a week, you know, to just for trimming. And, uh, and it, it was a lot. And, and now what we're able to do is uh, we still have the, those uh, individuals, um, but instead of trimming, they can help us with doing a lot of other things that, that need attention. So, um, so that's one thing that we're going to continue to, to work towards. Uh, one of the other things, you know, we have, uh, and, and you know, with the, the CIP, we continue to, to add 
um, different amenities. Uh, we're adding the splash pad, the downtown plaza, <coughs> we have the, the indoor aquatic center, just a, a lot of different activities, the agility course. We've added the Miracle Park. Um, so what we're doing is as of July 1st, we will be adding uh, another maintenance worker, you know, to, to help with, uh, with that. Um, we do have a, a vacancy right now um, in our, our maintenance worker staff. And what we're doing is uh, that individual, we posted, they're going to be posting that position. Um, but we, with both of these, the vacancy and the additional worker, um, they will both work Wednesday to Sunday schedules. <coughs> so right now we uh, we spend a lot of overtime mm -hmm. on, uh, on the weekends because we do the, uh, the sanitation rounds where we have, uh, you know, people coming in. We pay that overtime. So with this, now we'll have two people. Um, we won't have to pay the overtime. They're there. Um, burials at the cemetery. It's not under your jurisdiction, but that's something that we do in, within our department. So if there is a, a burial, um, they can work that. We don't have to bring somebody in for overtime. Uh, there's some some other activities at the aquatic center that uh, that these individuals will do. So so we really felt that now is the time to to do that. And with it, then we can may use some of those funds for other things that are needed within the. Um, the, the park system. As far as forestry, uh, when uh, Paul Tauke, uh, who is a great <coughs> addition to, uh, to our staff, uh, he came in and just started putting together a plan where all of our parks and all of the right-of-ways, all the trees and our parks and the right-of-way get trimmed every five years. Mm -hmm. um, so, so he puts it uh, together and, and, uh, and gets our staff out there and, and uh, really helps and, and will continue to, to help in the, the future. Um, if the trees are trimmed correctly, um, they're growing correctly, they can be stronger, um, and we don't have a lot of uh, issues. You all right, Jeremy? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so so any, any questions or comments? When you talked to uh, Jerry Peters, there was a lot of discussion when the high school was built that the auditorium would be available to the public. Yeah, I know the pool wasn't going to be, but are they have they backtracked on that a little bit too, or? You know, I had a conversation with him, oh, probably two months ago, maybe even three, just in regards to um, what is their what's their philosophy, what are they charging, do they have a policy and stuff, and at the time they did not yet. Okay. So, uh, so. So he didn't give me a whole lot of information, but that's something I can I can follow up on, because obviously that could impact what uh, what we do. I mean, that was a concern I think from some of the people in the city was, if the high school opens up theirs, they also have the middle school that would almost kill the city auditorium for some of those events. Yeah, and it really depends on what they're they're going to be charging, yeah. and because there are. Um, yeah, yeah. Obviously, people will go to to where they get their best deal, and and that is a concern, you know, from us. And 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 there are some other things, you know, Hope Church, who, you know, we get a lot of money right now for rentals from Hope Church because they use that. But they're going to be building a, a new church sometime in the next, uh, you know, few years. So, um, so we we have Courtney and I have had conversations with Craig, um, and and say, hey, we need to start looking at. What do we do differently? Um, what can we bring in? And in the virtually anywhere in here is one of those activities um, to, to really start bringing people in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we had the, the Craig brought in the Nadas um, several years ago and uh, they did a, uh, um, a, a, well, they call it, a, it was at Christmas time, but it wasn't really a Christmas um, <laughs> concert. But, uh, uh, but they they got their start here in Ames, the Nadas, and and uh, uh, when they were playing during the concert, you know they even made a guy made a comment. He goes, "I didn't even know this was here. Uh, I've been in Ames for how long, and and I didn't even know this was here. What a what a great venue." So so we have to do a, a much better job of letting people know that hey, it is here, it is available, and and it's a, a great facility. So so. So, yeah, so as far as the school district, I will follow up with Jerry and see if they have um, any additional information.
So, so with that, if there's no other other questions. And again, you have the fees and charges um, in the in the pack, and I'm not going to go through um, uh, that at all. <laughs> so, so we are recommending with uh, with the fees and charges. You know, alternative one, which would be uh, to uh, approve the um, uh, the proposed fees for for 22-23, and and with that, that is within the jurisdiction of the of the the Parks and Recreation Commission. The second component of uh, of it would be, you know, if you liked what you saw, and I know it's just a, a small glimmer of uh, of our overall budget, but uh, but if you like that. Um, you could uh, make a motion to recommend city council, you know, adopt, you know, the, the budget as, uh, as presented. So, um, so really two components that kind of go hand in hand, uh, because if you were to say, no, we're not going to approve the, the proposed fees, then that will have a huge impact on, on our budget. Um, so, um, so the budget was developed with those fee increases in mind. So, so they kind of go hand in, in hand, but we would we would need a motion motion, and and I know we have uh, um, on the agenda kind of a, an A and a B. Can they go all in one? It, it can go all in one. Okay. Okay. Can I get a motion? I'll move to approve the fee changes for fiscal year twenty two twenty three, and recommend that City Council approve the Parks and Recreation's budget as presented. Okay, can I get a second? I'll second. Okay, any discussion? Okay, all uh, those. Oh, go I, ahead. <laughs> I don't see a whole lot of increases in here. Yeah. And I know wage expenses have skyrocketed at the university for the same kind of folks that you are getting. Are we going to be okay with mm -hmm. these minimal increases? I'm kind of looking. Yeah, so, so. <laughs> Sorry, Jill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so, with, uh, so, so with it, um, with the, the budget as, as is developed right now um, with it, you know, we have probably about, I think it's just over 3% increase um, for, for our overall budget. And, and that does not include, you know, the additional maintenance worker that's on top of that, that 3%. So, so with, uh, with some of it, some of our programs, um, we are finding that we are able to, to, to get the staff, you know, for what we need and so on. There are some programs that we are not able to, to find the staff. So, so one of the, the things that we have, uh, you know, talked about, um, Courtney and I have talked about is, is sometimes when we do these partnerships, so such as we have with, um, Ames Racket and Fitness for mm -hmm. tennis lessons. We do is they have um, access to, to the people who those tennis enthusiasts. So they hire all the staff, and then we do a revenue sharing. Um, so so we don't necessarily have to to hire the the staff, but that's one way how we can maybe uh, alleviate some of the staffing concerns you know that we have. Um, in some cases, you know, we have had conversation such as with our dance and gymnastics you know, program, you know, we're finding it's a, uh, it's difficult um, or has been difficult to find those, uh, those staff. So what we'll probably wind up looking at or doing is actually increasing the uh, cost of those classes to um, offset an increase in the, the fees or, or our wages. So, so those are things that, that we we'll continue to, to, to look at. Um, so, so it is. It is going to be. It is going to be tough, um, and uh, and we may be coming to you at some point um, with uh, with an increase in fees just to, to cover some of that as well. Okay. So we have a motion on the table, and we have a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Seeing none, motion passes. Okay, next up is update regarding the indoor aquatic center. Yeah, so so not a, a, a lot. I you know went through in detail at the December meeting, 
Uh, one of the things uh, we have been working on is the uh, request for proposals for a construction manager, and we're looking to take that to city council next Tuesday. Um, that will then go out, you know, would be due towards the end of February. Uh, we'd have uh, an evaluation team review that, uh, maybe bring in one or two um, firms, have a, an interview, and then we would take uh, something to the city council to award a contract. Once that hits the streets, then we'll be working with uh, RDG, you know, to, to negotiate um, uh, contracts, scope of services and everything. Um, and we'll take that to the city council at the same time. Uh, today, um, we started, uh, uh, we contracted with Impact 7G, uh, which is an environmental services company. Um, they started over at uh, the DOT um, with the two buildings and on the property that we're looking to, to purchase. So they will be doing what's called a phase one environmental study. And with that, they basically look at the records, uh, do a lot of research, try to figure out what was on that property. Um, mm -hmm. And then based on that phase one, if they have concerns, uh, say, yeah, there's a, a, a gas station with uh, several underground tanks that operated on that site for 40 years, you know, they may say, yeah, you might want to have a, a phase two study done. Um, so we'll see what the see what they uh, um, come up with that. The other piece of that is we're doing the, they're doing a hazard identification, um, the hazard material identification um, in the two buildings. So we'll be looking for asbestos, looking for lead, and uh, and then they'll give us a report on on that as well. So so if again if there is um, hazard materials in those buildings, then we'll work with the, have conversation with the DOT about, well, uh, we don't want to pay $2.9 million and then have to, to do all this abatement um, at the same time. So, so that uh, they're doing that uh, today and tomorrow. And then, uh, you know, sometime in the next uh, couple, three weeks, we should get a, a report back from them on that and see where it is. And at the same time, the, the DOT is, uh, is working you know, on uh, on a purchase agreement, starting to, to kind of the, with their policy um, to dispose of property. So, so a lot of lot of pieces, you know, coming up. We do have the the application for the reinvestment district that's due at the end of February. So we're working on on that as as well. So, uh, any questions on on any of that? Okay, next up update regarding the downtown plaza design. Yeah, so with the, the downtown plaza, just a, a couple of developments. Um, one of the things, and uh, when we shared our CIP on Tuesday with city council, um, what we wound up doing is when we went to them in November and we shared uh, the information with uh, the commission as well, um, we were looking at a, a budget of about 4350000 uh, just over the, the holidays, um, there are a few things that uh, that came up. So, so the budget that we presented to the commission or to council on Tuesday was actually for four million five hundred and fifty-five thousand. So it was an increase of about one hundred eighty-four thousand. So, um, just a, a, a few different things. Um, it did uh, cause us to uh, to take a look at the the plaza, and you know, we did. Uh, make a, a couple of adjustments, you know, with things, you know, instead of having all the concrete on the south end and uh, having three food trucks and so on, um, we're cutting a, some of that concrete down, having a different place for the food trucks, uh, <coughs> we're just doing some some different things. Um, we are hoping to, to take plans and specs to city council on February 8th. Um, that uh, that first meeting in uh, in uh, in February, and at that time we'll share, you know, a little bit more of the details, and and then what we'll do is at our February meeting, um, what I'll do is I'll bring that uh, um, to to you as well, so you can see some of the the changes. Um, in some cases, we actually think we might be winding up with a a, a better approach. There's more green space. Uh, there's not as much concrete. Um, and so on. So a um, few more spaces for people maybe just to lounge on the grass if they if they want to throw a blanket down um, and so on. So uh, 
Um, so, so there are some benefits that we feel are coming out of this, uh, um, this situation. So, so that's where, that's where we're at with uh, the plaza. I would say also we are thinking or trying to get it so we can operate the ice rink sometime next winter. Um, don't know if that will work. Um, we did have a, a meeting with American Arena, and and they said right now, with uh, with parts and everything. So the the ice skid. So there's two components: putting all the pipe in the ground and laying the concrete over the top of it. That's one. They said that basically you probably get that done in 30 days, mm -hmm. and then the concrete cures for 30 days. So so two months from from start to finish with that. But the ice skid that's going to go in the building, that's going to uh, create the ice, all right? Um, so from the time you order it to the time it's operational, probably eight months. Um, you know, so so once, uh, once we are able to award a contract, we're having a conversation about do we order that ice skid right away? Um, and if we were able to do that, say, April 1st, um, and things are the same environment as they are right now, um, that would get us sometime maybe into December, you know, that uh, that uh, everything would be operational from an ice making standpoint. We would still have to, the building would be a concern mm -hmm. um, and, and so on. So so those are some things that once we um, get it out to bid and, and start talking to the contractor, successful contractor, we'll have those conversations mm -hmm. um, and, and try to, to get a feel. But we really don't want to wait until December of 23 or November of 23 to, to check out the, you know, the ice ribbon. We don't, we don't want to wait that long. So, so those are just a couple of things that, uh, that we're, we're doing. Project updates. Really have nothing um, for tonight. Okay. Monthly report. Just if Joshua or Kelly <coughs> to share anything. If you're looking for something to do on these cold winter days, uh, the ice rinks are available at South River Valley. We have those are um, being maintained by our staff, but also an individual from AMHA is helping us keeping those in those surfaces in good shape. After the snow this last week, they got a little rough, but we're in, we're working to get it back back smooth. And also, if you're a cross country skier, the 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 paths have been groomed at East River Valley Park. So if you enjoy cross country skiing, you're able to do that as well. So, and then uh, one more thing. Uh, in regards to maybe a project that we ordered the accessible canoe kayak launch. And so that'll hopefully uh, come in soon so we can get that installed sometime yeah. this spring. Cool. Yeah, that'll be a fun project. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, nice to see the cross country skiing open. And I went by the other day, there wasn't a single parking spot left. Oh, that's cool. Great. It was really full. Oh, great. That's nice to see. Yeah, no, our, our, uh, we have a staff member that takes a lot of pride in doing and grooming that, and he was out there at 6 a.m. on the, on Saturday, last Saturday grooming. So. Oh, my gosh. Yep. <laughs> and, and we'll give a shout-out. Sean Crane yep. is the, the staff person. <laughs> yep. So, um, yeah, he does take a, everything he does, and with all of our staff. They take a lot of pride in, in what they do. But uh, um, Sean has received a lot of compliments the last couple of years. Yes. Um, with his uh, work down there at the at the, the cross country ski trails. Oh. Any other comments? Mm -hmm. Okay, make a. Um, can I get a motion to? Oh, I'm sorry. Next, the next meeting is scheduled for Thursday, February seventeenth at four p.m. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion. Mm -hmm. Motion to adjourn. Okay, meeting adjourned.